Good morning. Thank you for coming this day. <clears throat> the main title of sermons of the Lenten season is a journey with the rabbi. If you have a bulletin and then you can see an insert inside the bulletin, this white. And then today is the second time of Lent. In John's Gospel, the word, the Greek word rabbi, is addressed to Jesus. In chapter 138, 49, chapter 3, verse 2, chapter 4, 31, 6, 25, 9, 2, and 11, 8. Then this word is addressed to Jesus by the imperfect or misguided disciples, except Chapter 3, verse 26, where it is addressed to John the Baptist. Then this March, uh, we, have, well, we have been going on a journey with Jesus, who is called as rabbi by the mistaken or flawed disciples. They might be just like us. We sometimes misunderstand our teacher. We sometimes fail to understand his saying or work. Yet, we are still willing to follow him. We are still willing to listen to him. And we are still willing to believe in him. Therefore, I would like to invite and encourage all of you to join this journey together and to think of who we are and what we are doing, as well as who Jesus is and what he has done for us. This insert is my sermon note with several questions and practices. So you can refer this sermon note for my sermon today. And then also you can use this insert as a small group study. The reason why this insert is provide, provided to you is I just want to be on the same page during this Lent, Lenten season. So please use this insert and, uh, for your this Lenten journey. After the first sign in Cana uh, and the cleansing of the temple in Jerusalem in chapter 2, Jesus is confronted with a man named Nicodemus. He is a sympathetic person. He is a man of the Pharisees who is faithful, who are faithful to the study of Torah and obedience of the law. He is a distinguished teacher. Jesus calls him as a teacher of Israel in verse 10. He is also a member of the Sanhedrin, which is a council of the Jewish people at that time. It's not certain why he came to Jesus at night. On the one hand, rabbis at that time, they studied and debated till late at night so that's why he came to Jesus at night. On the other hand, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night for reasons of secrecy. 
In other words, he just wanted to avoid publicity. It is perhaps a more probable explanation that Nicodemus came out of the darkness into the true light. And then I want you to remember this. From darkness to light. Although he had seen Jesus' signs and ministry and been ready to ask questions, he is still incredulous and uncomprehending about who Jesus is. He still doesn't understand and he still, he still doubts who Jesus is. To him, Jesus is merely a teacher like him, or more than a teacher, perhaps a prophet. He is openly curious about Jesus, and he recognizes him as a teacher or a prophet with God's mighty power. But still, he doesn't understand Jesus as the incarnate word. Like John chapter 1 verse 14 says, The word became flesh and lived among us. But he doesn't understand that. His thought with Jesus is not bad. Verse 2, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus, however, responds to him with an unexpected subject. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Or again, if you have the Bible, there will be a footnote after the word above at the end of verse 3. The Greek word translated as from above is Anothen, and it is also can be translated as afresh, anew, or again. While Nicodemus insists that he sees something of who Jesus is in the signs, Jesus asserts that no one can see the kingdom of God unless the one is born from above were born again. As an Orthodox Jewish rabbi, for Nicodemus, the idea of rebirth is strange because he and the Pharisees, they have thought it, thought that it would be only possible at the age to come. Not, the age, not this age. So for them, it will be only possible in the future, in the final future. But Jesus is saying that it can happen now. So Nicodemus, he, doesn't, he, could, he cannot understand being born from above or born again. So he asked in verse 4, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? He just thinks of a second birth from the womb of a human mother. He just ignores the fact that Anuthan also means from above. He doesn't think of being born from above, born from God. Yes, being born again or being born from above or rebirth is certainly a second birth, but it's not merely a, a repeat, repetition of man's first birth but begetting from above, 
from God. As a representative of the old order, the Pharisee and the teacher of Israel, Nicodemus, it was impossible for him and for them, and it was impossible for those who belong to the old order to simply move forward into the kingdom of God. Human nature, our nature, is not capable of seeing or entering the kingdom of God unless we are born from above, born from God, born again. The old order is inadequate to add to the entry into the kingdom of God. Rebirth from God is essential to see and enter the kingdom of God. The Greek verb genna, which is rendered as to be born, can refer to both the father's sect, to beget, and the mother sect to give birth to bear. You all know that a baby cannot be born without mom and dad. Hmm? No? Yes. This verb has two aspects of action. Fathers and mothers. Just like Nicodemus, we all need to be born from above, born from God, born again. Bless you. As a baby, however, a baby cannot be born by oneself. Is there anyone who chose parents when you were born? No. We cannot be born again or born from above by ourselves. Although Nicodemus had such knowledge, gift, wisdom, and position, remember he is a member of the Sanhedrin. He is a leader of Jewish people. He is the Pharisee. But his gift, his knowledge, his wisdom, his position, it was meaningless and it was useless to be born again, to be born from above. Jesus claims that he cannot see, he cannot experience, he cannot enter the kingdom of God unless he is born from above, born from God. John Calvin once said properly, saying, quote, By the term born again or born from above, he means not the amendment of a part, but the renewal of the whole nature. Hence, he found that there is nothing in us that is not defective. Because our nature is totally corrupted, our nature should be renewed and restored completely. That's why Jesus teaches Nicodemus and us that no one can see, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless born from We all need inward conversion, new birth, new begetting, new birth. But it's not our work, but the work of God, the work of the Spirit, who comes from the above. Born of water and Spirit, by born of water and Spirit, God cleanses us, God renews us, and He gives a new birth in life. As we remember 
Ezekiel 36, verses 25 to 27. I said, I will sprinkle clean water upon you. 26. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. 27. I will put my spirit within you. The Bible never says we will sprinkle clean water upon ourselves. But the Bible doesn't say on a new heart we will be given, we will give ourselves. But Bible, the Bible never says we will put our spirit. We will put God's spirit within, within us. No. God will sprinkle clean water upon us. God will give us a new heart and God will put a new spirit within us. And God will put His spirit within us. Ezekiel 36, verses 25 to 27. If you want to take a look at that passage. It's God who cleanses us. It's God who restores us. And it's God who transforms us. It is God who grants us new hearts that are eager to do God's will. It is God who gives us new nature from above. I know you all are very nice and wonderful people, but no matter how good we are, we need to be born from above. We need to be born from again, born again. It is God who bears us, who gives us the second birth from above. Because our human birth only produces simple human nature. Why only the spirit gives birth to spirit? So please remember, God gives his people a new heart, a new nature, a new life, and a new birth. It's not us who can renew our nature. It's not us who can change our sinful nature. It's not us who can give us a new birth and new life. But it's only God who transforms us, who changes us, who gives us a new birth and new life. When Jesus explains the work of the Spirit, Nicodemus doesn't understand, so he asks again, how can these things happen? In our Bible, in verse 9, it is translated as, how can these things be, but rather than be, how can these things happen would be a better translation. How can these things happen? He doesn't quite comprehend what Jesus is saying. Jesus draws an analogy between wind and the spirit. He illustrates the effect of the spirit, like Connie shared the message with children. Like the wind at the time, the spirit is completely beyond both the control and the understanding of human beings. The wind can be neither controlled nor comprehended by us. But it doesn't mean that we cannot de detect its effect. Yesterday, wind was pretty strong, right? So, I, uh, when I came to church before 
Morgan's wedding shower, I just saw that trash can, both of them, were just fallen. So I and my first son, Ji Sung, we just moved back. And then while we were just talking, after we talked with Morgan, I just saw that again, the trash can was fallen again. I didn't do that. My son didn't do that. And nobody in the church did do that. But just wind did it. We cannot see the wind, but we can detect the effect of wind. We hear its sound, see the swaying leaves and moving the clouds, and sometimes wind just let trash can fall on. The spirit neither controlled nor understood by us, but that doesn't mean that we cannot perceive his effect. The effects of the spirit are undeniable and clear. Verse 8, so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The person who is born of the Spirit, born of water and Spirit, born from above, can be neither controlled nor understood by people born from flesh or born from earth. You know, every Sunday, or every day, I am grateful that I have been watching people who are born of the Spirit, just like you. I don't know, sometimes I don't know when the church is decorated, cleansed, mowed, or repaired. But I see the changes, and the changes better than yesterday or the past. I see the efforts of many women and men who have served God, body of Christ, and neighbors without expecting recognition for their work and effort. What I am seeing is the effort of people who are born of the Spirit. So, I just want to express my gratitude to all of you who are born of Spirit and who are serving God, His body of Christ, and neighbors without expecting recognition for their work and effort, just like the effort of the Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. And if you're okay, let's give our hands to all who are serving God and neighbors without recognition, expecting recognition or praise. We are doing, you are doing, because we are born from above, born of the Spirit, and the Spirit is working like that. We don't understand how the Spirit is working, but still we detect the effect of the Spirit. As we are born from above, as we are born of the Spirit, our deeds, our words, our works will be just like the effect of the Holy Spirit. Whether our works are recognized whether our deeds 
are shown to others. It'll be just like similar, the effect of the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus, unfortunately, he still doesn't understand what Jesus is saying and who Jesus really is. And then, since verse 11, Jesus tells not just Nicodemus, but all who are impressed by Jesus' signs, but have not had faith in him. In verse 11, yet you, it's a second plural, okay, do not receive our testimony. Referring to the narrative of the bronze serpent, in Numbers chapter 21, verses 9 to, uh, 4 to 9, Jesus invites all who hear his testimony. He just reveals heavenly things, but they are rejected. And the rejection of the re revelation will be expressed by crucifixion of Jesus himself. His exhortation is accomplished no, not in clouds of glory, but on the cross. Like the bronze serpent was lifted up for the salvation of Israelites, the Son of Man will be lifted up on the cross for the salvation of all creatures. As the uplifted serpent drew the heart of Israel to God, for their salvation. The unlived Jesus will draw people, draw us to himself and gather to God his children. As the Israelites were commanded to turn their eyes to the bronze serpent for their salvation, Nicodemus and all we are challenged to turn our eyes to Jesus for new birth, for the eternal life, for the salvation. How can this happen? Nicodemus asks. Jesus censors. Whoever believes in him who is lifted up on the cross may have eternal life. The new birth, the new life is experienced. The kingdom of God is seen and entered, and the eternal life is given through the saving work of the cross of Jesus Christ. Not through our good works or good deeds, but the saving grace of Jesus Christ on the cross. The mission of the Son is the consequence of the Father's love. God so loved the world. And God's purpose in sending His Son into the world is not to condemn the world, but to save the lost and condemn the world through His only Son. Why God so loves the world, His love only becomes effective those who believe in the Son. As the world became flesh, the light shone in the darkness. The people still prefer to live without the light, without the truth. The adequate alternative is to do the truth. Why the lover of darkness avoids the light, the lover of light comes into the light. So if we love light, our deeds will be through, through God in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Like I said earlier, Come out of the darkness to the true light, true life, true truth. Let me conclude the message with Nicodemus. John 
chapter 3 verse 9 is the last voice of Nicodemus in the conversation with Jesus. But he appears again in John chapter 3, uh, chap- chapter 4, uh, 7. I'm sorry. I'm rushing to conclude the message. <laughs> he appears again in John chapter 7, verses 50 to 51, defending Jesus against, against his fellow Pharisees. And finally, he comes out in public to bury the body of Jesus in John chapter 19, verses 39 to 40. Nicodemus, once, he didn't understand who Jesus was, what he was saying to him. <coughs> he disappeared before Jesus soon, but like Jesus saying on his ascent, lifted up. He saw Jesus hung and lifted on the cross at Golgotha, and finally came out from darkness to light. He finally turned his eyes on Jesus who was lifted up on the cross. Sisters and brothers, God is only able, God only is able to change us, restore us, and renew us. So, accept his invitation. Come out from darkness to light. Believe in Jesus Christ who is lifted up, who was lifted up on the cross for our salvation. And do good in God through Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. I would like to sing the hymnal Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus together before we sing closing him. We're going to sing this hymn twice each short, so let's sing twice. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn our eyes upon Jesus and believe in him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace to send your Son, Jesus Christ, to us. We thank you that you give us new, the new life to become children of God by believing in the name of the incarnate word, your only Son. Let us acknowledge your initiative for, us, for our salvation and respond to your invitation properly. Let us believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us turn our eyes, ears, minds, hearts, and souls to your Son, Jesus Christ, whose name we pray. Amen. Let's sing closing hymn together. Let's stand as we join in love divine, all loves excelling. (laughs) 
Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of them to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure and bound and love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh, breathe, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit, let us find the second rest. Take away our bent to sinning, how far and omega be. End of faith as is beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all thy life receive. Suddenly return and never, never more thy temples leave. Till we would be always blessing, serve thee as thy hopes of all. Pray and praise thee without ceasing, glory in thy perfect love. Sisters and brothers, go in peace. And remember, God gives us the new life. We are not who gave us the new life, who gave us the new birth, but we are born from above, born again, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by God's work only. So trust His work, and listen to his invitation and rely on him just what Greg shared frog rely on him and share the good news of the gospel with our secret disciples just like Nicodemus who are interested in Jesus Christ, but who hesitate to move forward one step to Christ. May the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us, sustain us, strengthen us, and keep us this day and forevermore.